from an undisclosed location in the great western desert in the land of the free and autonomous Native American people, the 2024 presidential campaign in the next time to return all U.S. land back to their right owners. This is the Ben Zion Podcast. Techno-communism. Welcome back to the Real Transhumanism Show. I'm Ben Zion, your host. Um, and I'd say it's the Real Transhumanism Show. That's tech- techno-communism as opposed to techno-fascism, which is what uh, most of the uh, transhumanists that you will meet and encounter are. And people understand this implicitly, even though they don't know very much about communism or fascism, which is why people are mostly repulsed by transhumanists, which is unfortunate because uh, some of the most significant ideas and certainly some of the most significant uh, technologies and their uses for human beings uh, await us uh, because of these technologies. So it's sad that um, this entire community has effectively been captured by um, what you could, uh, what you could, in a only slightly reductive way, call um, widespread CIA manipulation. Three-letter agencies. Yes, uh, do all of these people work for three-letter agencies? Some of them do. The Transhumanist Party has people on their board that work for three-letter agencies. A lot of these boards have people who are pretty open about this. A lot of them work for think tanks, who are basically um, in the employ uh, right-wing think tanks like the Heritage Foundation. Um, and there's a, a thousand others uh, that are basically uh, in the employ of of fascist forces um, and agencies of this kind. Uh, so it's not it's not terribly reductive to say uh, that uh, the CIA is holding back uh, the techno singularity, and the people who profess uh, to want to see the techno singularity are approaching their lives and their ideologies in such a way that is runs very much counter to that goal. Um, that that is uh, that is quite sad. I'm wearing white today. It's getting a little bit warmer. It was a little overcast again today, though. It was looking like rain. I had to uh, come from uh, come from playing pool, and I stopped to uh, talk with AJ, a friend uh, that I mentioned who's living in a tent. Um, he's lived a, around uh, Center City, Phoenix, for uh, six years, and I stopped and spoke to him. Long story short, I invited him on the show, and we're going to uh, shoot tomorrow and talk a little bit about The Zone, which I'll explain more. It's more or less the, um, it's more or less the unhoused, large unhoused uh, community in uh, the city of Phoenix. Uh, you could say it's equivalent to uh, a skid row of Los Angeles, or this term skid row, which refers to um, communities elsewhere. Um, these are communities, uh, make no mistake. These are your brothers and sisters. Uh, the term the zone refers to um, uh, a statistic that's bandied about in Phoenix about uh, the death rate. This is a murder zone, it's, it's called. I live in the murder zone. But that's not the, the, the thing that's really significant in, in that turn of phrase, that people, that people uh, would die in this area. What is really significant is the dehumanization of your brothers and sisters, because um, um, almost anyone else uh, born anywhere else in the world, there's 200 countries, and almost any of those countries, my friend AJ, anyone who's ever been unhoused, uh, they would have had a very different life had they been born in those lands. Uh, but in the fascist United States, uh, there is a, a quite intentional a lack of concern for uh, housing and housing security. There is, of course, no housing authority. When you uh, combine that with other uh, factors, um, anti-communist forces, effectively, a raid. Folks uh, like most transhumanists, folks like the people at the Heritage Foundation, fascists, um, <clears throat> anti-communism and fascism are the same thing. Uh, these uh, these forces have have aligned themselves in uh, seeing that the United States also has no public health service. Uh, the only real uh, thing when you when you strip away the other um, um, uh, factors and anomalies, the only real thing that you can uh, say uh, is a predictor of longer lifespans is having a public health service, and having these other socialist institutions in place. That's the difference between living uh, populations living above 80 or dying much, much younger. Now, transhumanists and folks that I'm going to be visiting later in the week, um, are um, uh, they, would, they, they, they deny this. They, they think that um, Peter Thiel and Ray Kurzweil and other mega-billionaires uh, living uh, uh, 400 years is going to be good for you. But... But consider, if you will, uh, that uh, advanced technologies uh, of a similar kind, it, it, the, the 20th century was dramatically different uh, from uh, the 19th century, and, and, and the 19th century a uh, good deal different from centuries prior. Uh, but those, those two centuries uh, were quite distinct. Uh, the 21st century is proving to be perhaps even more uh, distinct. But the, the 20th century was defined in many ways by um, um, uh, advanced technology of the kind that transhumanists say will, will help you. In fact, at the turn of the 20th century, no one predicted that lifespans would be on a downward trajectory at this time uh, for the last three decades. 
uh, people thought that uh, um, the outcomes, the transhumanists uh, say, um, are just around the corner for you if you just uh, patient and good and play along uh, with uh, capitalist misdeeds. Um, it would have already come to pass, and they would have, and and they quite easily would have. Um, um, this the, the 20th century was defined uh, by increases in productivity, um, increases in automation, but those benefits were not handed down uh, to the general population in any real way. And a lot of that has uh, been motivated by the uh, baseline, unacknowledged, and uh, most typical racial animus uh, that defines the United States. Um, the United States is an extremely racist place, so people will um, deny their own brothers and sisters, their own literal brothers and sisters, um, um, housing authority and a public health service and, uh, and uh, labor and wage guarantees of various kinds, which are very, very poor in the United States as well. They will deny their own brothers and sisters in, uh, these things because they were also interested in seeing that uh, darker skinned brothers and sisters uh, do not have those things. They will cut off their noses to spite their faces. This is how motivated they are uh, by racial hatred. Um, and um, uh, you won't find uh, very many people um, in tech circles who uh, they'll pay lip service to this. They say, I'm not racist. I, I think all, all, all colors are attractive. But they're not fighting against institutions uh, that are pretty particularly designed uh, to kill folks. They're not doing that. Um, and is this a failing that's limited uh, to tech people? No, oh, of course not. Uh, this is of indicative of the entire fascist West. Uh, and the United States uh, being the worst uh, place uh, like this as its ringleader. Uh, but uh, that's no excuse. Uh, uh, transhumanists are people who profess uh, uh, to uh, a desire uh, to remake the world anew. Th th this is what they wish to do. Uh, they wish to discard the institutions and trappings of the past, and uh, not only uh, those institutions, but remake the human form. Uh, so what, what excuse have such people? who wish to remake the human form, who wish uh, to uh, do a complete teardown of society, um, uh, uh, such as it is, without uh, doing great harm. Um, what, what excuse do these people have for supporting uh, fascist institutions? Well, there is none. And it's, and it's, and it's an incoherent worldview. And, that's, and it's, um, the, this, the sharpness of these contradictions um, results from, uh, uh, quite simply, uh, this three-letter agency and uh, right-wing influence um, uh, poisoning something that would otherwise be uh, quite good and would not be rejected by people because people, you know, they might not know very much about the works of Vladimir Lenin. They might not know very much about uh, the ideas described on this podcast as techno-communism, uh, but they're not idiots. Uh, they can figure out that someone is kind of a fascist and reject uh, that out of hand. And that's, and that's why, you know, people say uh, people aren't ready for this uh, sort of thing. People have been more than ready for this sort of thing for a hundred years. Um, uh, people have been ready for life extension uh, people have been ready. Uh, the only reason that these uh, trans, other transhumanists pretend that people aren't ready for this is because uh, they don't want to do anything that will um, upset the ruling elites. They operate wholly in service uh, to the ruling elites. Uh, so when people say uh, people aren't ready, what they're really saying is billionaires aren't ready. Um, and what happens to billionaires in this scenario, in the technological singularity? They just become like you. Uh, the playing field is flattened. <laughs> they don't lose anything. Right? They don't get hurt. Um, they just, uh, everyone else, everyone else wins and the society becomes a better, a better, uh, a sort of thing. These institutions, um, uh, are, are much improved upon, but, uh, they won't, uh, they won't really support that. And these people are almost to a man, um, uh, saying one thing that they want a techno utopian outcome and by their, most of their words and all of their deeds, essentially, uh, doing quite the opposite, holding back the technological singularity. You only need to look at. The example I gave this week was um, uh, Google uh, holding back uh, its um, uh, natural language processing product. They said because it wasn't ready to be productized, quote, productized. They said because um, um, they don't want to uh, uh, frighten people with, with weird chatter. That's not the reason. The, uh, Google is a military contractor, and uh, military contractors, more than any other corporation, which uh, should all be done away with, uh, but military contractors operate on a principle of not angering the ruling class, uh, which includes not doing anything that could have much of an impact on civilization. So when they have something that they say, oh, this could impact civilization, okay, we won't do it. <laughs> and you better believe that there are dozens of advanced algorithms and, uh, and nearly as many hardware um, uh, uh, breakthroughs that are being kept under glass in that way. Um, you know, this is just the one moment where the, from time to time the mask slips and you can see this. 
Uh, but um, there's there's a, a whole host of things that we're not entirely privy to, only more matters of speculation even than this. Um, and uh, I, I mentioned this on another show. I'll read um, something from uh, our friend in the Philippines. And I maybe did a little disservice uh, to this person who I consider, um, even though they are a, a staunch anti-transhumanist, uh, they are uh, trying to do the right thing. And I said, you know, that they are too much focused on um, um, humanism. That might be, it might have been a little overstatement. And even the, uh, I'm not a religious person. Um, I'm not too impressed by superstitious ideas. Uh, this seems to be, um, uh, to some degree, a part of their thinking, um, religious, um, the loss loss of religion as a as a as a sad thing that would happen uh, I see no reason to suppose that that would ever be a sad thing uh, but still uh, these people this person this religious lunatic is still more honest uh, and uh, about transhumanism than almost any transhumanist and this this, uh, this is again Amalia Devendera um, and you wouldn't know who this is probably um, this is somebody who posts in uh, a couple of transhumanist groups and um, and um, and and good for that uh, but um, they are um, very critical of transhumanism, and I've, this is the second time now that I'll share uh, their words with you. Um, aging cured. Death conquered. Work ended. Uh, the human brain reverse engineered by AI. Uh, babies born outside of the womb. Uh, virtual children and non-human partners. That's, that's the, vir the non-human partners thing. Let's buy that now. Um, effectively, you know, a confluence of... Um, uh, the high-end sex toys and high-end chatbots. You can buy that now. Um, <clears throat> uh, the uh, the future of humanity could be virtually unrecognizable. Eh, very different. Uh, the future is wildly scary, says Amalia. Eh. Uh, advocates of transhumanism believe that there are spectacular rewards to be reaped from going beyond the natural barriers and limitations that constitute an ordinary human being. But to do so would raise a host of ethical problems and dilemmas. Get an argument for me. <laughs> uh, AI is currently uh, used for uh, selling, spying, killing, and gambling. Yes, that is uh, that is what I often say to people too. Think think of people uh, like Zoltan Isfin or just the garden variety a neoliberal uh, Joker uh, uh, tech person. Um, you know, some of them are high, much higher profile people than than any transhumanists and Zoltan Isfin or anyone. Um, you know, people like Elon Musk is is this good example uh, the good example. Uh, so if the, Elon Musk or Zoltan Isfin will say. Um, um, we have to uh, advance uh, the uh, this techno revolution as they see it, and uh, but and so we can't uh, we can't interfere with the good operation of the existing economy. Uh, this result in Isfin, a presidential candidate, um, a transhumanist presidential candidate of, of years past, the past two election cycles, uh, presumably also 2024, um, uh, was made this his whole personality uh, for around the time not not coincidentally. Around the time that the um, that uh, there were uh, there was the possibility of um, of lockdown effects, lockdown effects that would have saved two million lives. But Zoltan Isfin doesn't care about two million lives. Zoltan Isfin cares about doing what the CIA tells him to do. And uh, so um, the whole um, the, the whole uh, uh, cast of um, usual suspects of, um, of of think tank rats, um, Heritage Foundation type people, um, came came out of the woodwork um, in 2020. Uh, to uh, remind you that you don't need to wear a mask because that would make you unfree. Uh, yeah, and when they, it did make you unfree. It uh, freed, uh, it freed two million people from the burden of being alive. It may remind you you don't need to wear a mask. Remind you you don't need to um, that you have to resist any of the things that would have saved those two million lives. And so Nesvin, to a lesser extent, I'll admit, uh, was doing much the same thing uh, by talking, of course, um, uh, another CIA talking point that the economy is most important. An economy, but what is that economy really? What is what is our friend Amalia said? AI is being used for selling, spying, killing, and gambling. Yes, that's the economy. <laughs> uh, uh, selling consumers garbage uh, that um, is killing the planet. Um, uh, open warfare and uh, all manner of subterfuge and sabotage. Um, advanced technology is overwhelmingly used for those things in, uh, by the West, by the United States and the West. Um, um, gambling. Uh, just, so this is the economy, right? Killing the planet and killing people. This is the thing that um, um, Zoltan Nissen believes that is so perfectly optimized uh, that uh, that any any small any small thing like like um, um, like closing down uh, like like closing down airports or um, or uh, taking basic measures to save a million lives and now two million lives um, that um, and you say oh Ben it's the official numbers say it's only 1.4 billion yeah it's 
they, they but you notice how it's been 1.1 1.2 million uh, for even though thousands of people are dying every week uh, this whole time uh, they the numbers of the death the total death toll has stayed about the same and that's because they're just stripping people uh, they don't even make an announcement on a regular basis of how many people have died anymore the idea the idea you're being tricked by project mockingbird into thinking that uh, nothing bad is happening uh, because they got what they wanted right they rolled out a vaccine a tiny band-aid on a gaping gunshot wound they rolled out a vaccine that's not efficacious uh not nearly so efficacious as it should be and not efficacious as it uh, would be um in conjunction with these other things but they don't care about that there's no money to be made um You won't find um, you won't find transhumanists much better than Zoltan this one, a techno fascist. You won't. You simply won't. Um, um, Amalia Devadera, you know, uh, she may she might be a low key Christian nationalist or something like this, uh, but uh, at least she's not a fucking fascist, right? <laughs> uh, um, so you know, I should be liking all of her posts, uh, but I don't uh, I don't necessarily agree with this hashtag anti transhumanism uh, and uh, these two or three things. Uh, you know, I think that transhumanism needs to uh, uh, be retaken by the people. Um, and um, um, that's why this is called the Techno-Communism Podcast, the real uh, transhumanist show.